Thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction. Yeah, hello everyone. It's really my great honor to share my research about secure learning for autonomous driving in adversarial environment here with you. And I'm Boli from UIC. And in this talk, I really want to share some research from the a little bit theory and uh, in practice how to make uh, like uh, like autonomous driving more uh, safe against different uh, types of adversarial behaviors on different levels. So we'll dig into that uh, in a minute. So first of all, we see that autonomous, uh, like machine learning AI has been ubiquitous in the world. It has been uh, applied to different uh, domains in our daily life. For example, of course, autonomous driving, intelligent medical healthcare, smart city, etc., and a lot of safety critical uh, area as well. But we can see the very interesting and important part here is that the, even though it has brought a lot of convenience currently, um, the machine learning or AI technique itself also brought a lot of security and privacy concerns. For example, uh, in 2016, the associate uh, press Twitter account uh, was hacked in phishing emails, spreading the rumor that the White House has been attacked, which actually um, triggered the autonomous trading bot to dump a large amount uh, of stocks and swipe about $136 billion within seconds. And of course, we uh, always uh, hear a lot of news about autonomous driving uh, with potential accident because of the misrecognition of certain objects, such as uh, bridge, such as trucks, or even uh, pedestrians, right? So how we can uh, dig into and understand such adversarial or even just uh, real world uh, attack scenarios better and try to understand and improve the robustness of it. And more importantly, I want to emphasize to say certify the robustness or safety for certain learning pipelines or uh, learning predictions or decision makings is quite important uh, uh, in my opinion. So overall, in general, we can see we are still living in a very uh, friendly world, friend world, friendly world, right? So basically, we have a lot of convenient platforms to help us develop different scale, uh, scalable like machine learning pipelines or tools or models um, with our data. And uh, but still, we are living in an adversarial environment. So a typical machine learner still have a very hard life to develop so-called secure or robust machine learning models. And therefore, as we mentioned, we really need to understand the uh, like different types of attack strategies or threat models better and therefore improve or develop robust or safe machine learning pipelines, for example, for different applications, including autonomous driving. And in general, uh, we can see, uh, for example, in our lab, our main goal is to develop the certifiably, which is very important uh, in addition to empirical robustness, right? Uh, robust, private, and expandable machine learning pipelines problems for different real world applications. For example, take the general uh, machine learning pipeline as an uh, example. Uh, we actually want to definitely look at different types of adversarial attacks during different uh, components like training, testing, deployment uh, phase, or um, based on such vulnerability identification to look at how to improve the robustness or even certify the robustness of it. And of course, we also want some explanation to better understand the why different types of prediction is made and also uh, different, uh, like how to protect the data, for example, collected by uh, autonomous driving vehicle uh, driven on the road, right? How do we protect such uh, privacy and still can use the data to train our models? So in this talk, I'll mainly focus on the potential attacks as uh, as an example to give some uh, examples on different levels of the attacks and then talk about a little bit how to improve the robustness and not to the extent of can definitely uh, so avoid such like a collision or uh, accident yet but hopefully can contribute to some ideas or promise that uh, to improve the um, safety of the autonomous driving vehicles so more concretely, we can see, given like uh, when we talk about autonomous driving vehicle, at least they are on the very high level, there are two levels, right? Uh, one is a single vehicle and one is uh, uh, based on the traffic scenarios. And given the single vehicle, there are several components. For example, perception, of course, it's very important. And in our uh, awesome challenge, we just show uh, there are a lot of good algorithms that can achieve even outperform human behaviors for, say, uh, object detection or uh, segmentation. And also based on such recognition, and prediction, we uh, will be able to make planning, control, and other decision making for the later component, right? And in this talk, I will mainly focus on three levels, uh, like the perception, the planning, and the traffic level to give some examples about what the attack 
tech could look like uh, against this component. And I will not dig into detail techniques for them. And later on, uh, because we want to save some time for one uh, types of defense method uh, against the such attacks. Uh, so that will be the whole talk. So first, let's look at some examples against the perception, uh, perception uh, sensors of, in terms of attacking them. So first we can see, I think uh, many of you have seen uh, such example uh, from one of uh, our work showing that under different uh, physical conditions, for example, different rows here shows different physical conditions, including different angles, distances, and uh, like lightning conditions, and different row show different, uh, sorry, different color shows different types of perturbations in physical world. And we can see all the stop signs in these slides are misrecognized as a uh, speed limit sign 45, which is uh, the adversary target which means that you will never stop at this sign, which you can see can cause severe consequences. And the such uh, right turn sign here will uh, be misrecognized as a stop sign based on certain optimization uh, attack algorithm. And this is a static uh, evaluation analysis. And of course, in the in a dynamic environment, we can see uh, when we drive a car towards this sign, on the left-hand side, it's one of the perturbed signs we showed in the last slides. And on the right-hand side, it's a control experiment with a vanilla stop sign. And we can see from the caption that when the car driving towards this sign, it's considered misrecognize the sign itself as a speed limit sign, for, but the control experiment can correctly recognize it. So this shows how severe or dangerous it could be, even with such simple like planar uh, road sign as an uh, adversarial object in real world. And uh, in addition to this uh, classification model, uh, as we mentioned, of course, different types of object detector models is very um, important and usually used uh, and equipped in autonomous driving vehicles. And here, this example shows that still with these types of perturbed real world stop sign, we can see even though all the rest of the object can be recognized, the stop sign itself cannot be recognized because of the perturbation on it. But clearly, human can see it. That's make it more stealthy and human cannot um, identify it as adversary and uh, like uh, replace it in real world. So that makes it quite dangerous. So such recognition only happens when we get very close to the sign itself and it, it recognizes the letters. But of course, we on purpose do not want to cover the letter. Otherwise, it doesn't uh, like it also for human, right? And of course, here is a white box attack against a YOLO. And you can also consider the transferability in a different environment, meaning that even we don't have access to the object detection model itself, it's still possible that uh, you can never recognize this stop sign uh, until you go to very close to the sign itself, which is too late for a car to stop. Right. And the such uh, like a physical uh, attack, the stop sign is actually currently exhibited in the Science Museum of London. And if someone have opportunities, you can uh, go to and check out. I think it's quite interesting. And it also bring up an important like problem that shows people already recognize that this is indeed a potential severe consequence. If later on, we can largely deploy, for example, the autumn strain vehicles for different purposes. Right. And uh, after this like uh, work uh, against the different classifications, uh, like uh, object detections and et cetera. So people actually published several papers showing, okay, maybe one types of, uh, you know, perception system is not robust. It can be attacked either in white box or black box settings. So maybe multi-sensor fusion is a way, right? Uh, if we have uh, different types of uh, sensors and we can, and we fuse them together or aggregate the result together, maybe it's safer. And this is interesting. And we actually take a look at it with uh, our awesome collaborators from uh, UCI and Baidu. And actually we can see, we can generate, um, you know, build up a pipeline and actually consider different types of sensors, including LiDAR and uh, cameras and the generators uh, kind of like adversarial 3D point clouds against the LiDAR and also manipulate the texture and the colors onto the object itself against the cameras and the field such result together and also minimize the distance between the like a vanilla object, which is a cone here, which is very common on uh, like a road or even a highway, right? And then make it stealthy and uh, optimize over this whole pipeline end to end um, like in, even in real world, some pipeline is not, you know, end-to-end uh, -end or differentiable. We can approximate the model and with certain differentiable models. And we actually show in physical world testing uh, such 
approximation and uh, attack is actually quite successful, uh, unfortunately, right? And uh, with a simulation environment against the different types of simulation, we can see um, in this draw, it shows the adversarial object. You can see this car can never recognize this object which we generated, and then it go past it, which could cause some consequences, right? But in this control experiment, the car will stop uh, as it can recognize this object uh, on the road. And even more interesting, as we just uh, uh, mentioned, we can uh, test this object, which is 3D printed out and put it on the road and drive a car towards it, which is based on the Baidu Apollo system. And we can see <coughs> on, against this adversarial object in the LiDAR system here, uh, actually there is nothing can be recognized as a obstacle here. But if you in the control experiment, if we put a box of similar size towards this uh, position, we can see the LiDAR can recognize this green box here, showing that in the control experiment, LiDAR can recognize such a box with similar size. But if we optimize the 3D object in a in certain way, then it can be misrecognized by the multi-sensor systems, including LiDAR camera or even others. So this shows that um, uh, these types of um, multi-sensor systems, uh, fusion systems could also be potentially uh, like vulnerable against uh, some motivated real-world adversary behaviors, right? And the more interesting phenomena uh, like simulations and examples can be seen from the web page. And uh, like towards uh, so far after we identify such uh, like uh, vulnerabilities, we actually have shown such vulnerability to different autonomous driving vehicle companies and uh, 11 of them have actually replied and uh, start to investigate, uh, which is a good news to improve the robustness of their system against uh, such potential uh, attacks. Right. So this is some examples from the uh, perception uh, perspective of a single vehicle. And uh, next, we can take a brief look at the planning and control pipelines, especially in terms of the reinforcement learning pipeline, and see whether um, in the whole like end-to-end -end reinforcement learning pipeline uh, in real world, whether such models can be vulnerable or not, and uh, where or what types of um, like adversarial attacks or behaviors could happen to manipulate such uh, systems. So take a uh, like a high level brief look at the whole loop of the uh, like reinforcement learning um, pipeline. We can see, of course, given the environment, we can have different observations, and the agent, for example. Uh, uh, agro vehicle can take the observations and make certain decisions or uh, false actions, right? And here you can see the observation itself can be attacked in the sense of, like we just mentioned, either stop sign or we have different colors of the wall, uh, as, like uh, some dots put on the road, etc. And not only for single frame, but also for a series of frame, it could be attacked as well consistently. And of course, based on the reward estimation, uh, the action, uh, like a decision, it can be attacked as well. And more interestingly, we didn't expect that, but actually we find that even uh, for some small environment dynamics, including like the weights of the car or the friction on the floor, of course, it can actually derive targeted attacks for uh, by manipulating such environment um, like dynamics or environment um, coefficients, which is uh, a little bit surprising. So for example, here in the simulation environment, uh, on the right hand side, it's a virtual environment by manipulating like the car weights a little bit, uh, which is still a um, reasonable car and cannot be identified by uh, direct, say, uh, statistical testing. And actually, you can see on the right hand side, this car already can achieve kind of the goal to, to uh, hit the wall. So the the goal of such attack is to let the vehicle hit the wall. So that is to say, you can see that even by manipulating the environment um, uh, like dynamics a little bit, su such control pipelines can also be um, uh, like a foot in certain way. And uh, later on, we will discuss uh, a little bit about the defense against the such um, like uh, reinforcement learning pipeline as uh, improved the robustness or certified robustness of it. So uh, 
uh, uh, next, uh, based on this, uh, in addition to the single vehicle against a different component, I want to take a look at the example of traffic level. I think currently a lot of uh, work focus on the single vehicle behavior and the decision making uh, the process, etc. But on the traffic level, uh, we're already seeing uh, potential severe or uh, like adverse behaviors, even though it's very Look may look very benign to human, but it can uh, like derive targeted adversarial behaviors. So I think it's very important to discuss at the early stage about what could be the potential uh, severe consequences on the traffic level as well. For example, here this is a simulation from the uh, Sumo based on the data, real world data collected from uh, the highway near uh, Nashville, and it's a collaboration with uh, our awesome collaborators from Vanderbilt. And we can see here uh, with uh, like an agro vehicle uh, that is equipped with ACC, the uh, like the control uh, following the front car. And what we do is just have a, a simple like a slowdown based on certain uh, conditions. For example, you can hit the brake for uh, this many of times with this many uh, strengths. And such attack can be easily realized by manipulating the canvas software, which we have done, or just uh, you have, a, a, you know, adversaries uh, sitting in the car and the hits a break. And the interesting phenomenon, uh, we find many, but one thing uh, I think worth to bring up is that, for example, if the um, under different driving speed conditions, if the driving speed is slower the say the string instability or the speed uh, fluctuation actually is more severe by doing such potential uh, slowdown for such vehicles uh, which will cause all the say if all the vehicles are uh, right then everyone if the car have one brake and every car in the later part will have such brakes and then the uh, string instability is actually quite severe and if um, if the speed is uh, slightly higher, the string instability is uh, actually surprisingly um, lower. And uh, one potential reason could be that with high speed, the distance between cars is actually larger than the low speed scenario, right? So maybe that's uh, actually the case that why the string instability is uh, less severe than this one. Um, but of course, um, in, under this scenario, the accident could be more severe than the low speed scenario. So more uh, work definitely uh, need to be involved to understand this and try to avoid such uh, speed fluctuation or such attacks. But one uh, thing we find so far is that such attack, like for example, the slowdown on the traffic level is very stealthy and very hard to be detected. We have tried all uh, like the potential ways, for example, looking at the patterns of traffic and use generative models to detect it, or use uh, the features of the speed and the distance between cars to train a model to identify such attack. But still, uh, the detection is um, not as good as we expect. So such attack itself is quite stealthy. And how to identify them and uh, defend against them is indeed a quite uh, important problem, uh, in my opinion. And in addition to this, um, this types of traffic level, uh, we can actually uh, even just uh, generate the adversarial traffic scenarios uh, or traffic things. And uh, this is quite interesting. So basically, we can see over years, the like semantic segmentation uh, over based on different models have been improved a lot, right? But here we show it's possible to generate the whole uh, adversarial um, traffic uh, scene, which satisfy the real world constraints or knowledge. For example, we know the cars are always following the same line on the same direction, etc. We always enforce the traffic scenario to uh, follow the real world constraint we have, and therefore it. Can can be severe, uh, like adversarial, but very uh, like realistic, which is a very uh, good scenario to test uh, the robustness or safety of the autonomous driving vehicles. And uh, this is a collaborative with uh, the awesome uh, student from um, SMU. And the one simple example we can see is that we can incorporate like the knowledge I just mentioned, for example, uh, the cars should follow, follow such uh, certain traffic rules or scenarios, and then incorporate that into the tree, and then use this uh, types of tree structure as a generative model to generate the scenarios. And uh, 
let me show some examples here. For example, compared with the standard, say, uh, point attack or post attack, which are actually not quite realistic because if we attack the point cloud, you can generate some object or positions which are weird, right? But if the, based on the same attack, actually you can follow certain rules. For example, here is that uh, the rules we use to satisfy the real world scenarios and therefore to make sure it's not only attacks or adversarial, but also can be uh, realistic in real world. And we can see that uh, such attack actually can attack the very state of art uh, point cloud segmentation with high attack successful rate and also with very high transferability, meaning it's find the very uh, like uh, compact uh, like regions that can uh, generate such adversarial behavior, which actually mm, is severe for different types of models and the attack uh, along them uh, effectively. So this shows that indeed um, from different levels as we have already shown some example on the perception, uh, like planning and even like a traffic level, either uh, like a slow down or like uh, on the high level traffic scenario uh, in an adversarial way, it can always attack um, the whole pipelines or autonomous driving behaviors. So that sounds uh, quite um, uh, pessimistic, but basically what we really want to ask based on the examples we shown before is how to defend or ensure the safety of AV in a adversarial environment that we mentioned, right? Uh, of course, there are many, many work have been done in this area, like including some uh, empirical method to improve the robustness, but uh, one drawback or limitation is that uh, such defense or detections can always be attacked again by attackers assume the attacker knows your detection method and uh, they can do something else to attack it again, uh, which always form a cat and a mouse game in security domain, right? And therefore, a line of uh, certified robustness work uh, are so far very uh, promising and develop very fast. For example, the oh, like the high level goal for the certification for robustness or safety is that uh, you can give the lower bound of the accuracy for a certain tasks you want to do, either perception, prediction, or control pipeline, um, action prediction, etc. You can give the lower bound of it uh, under certain adversarial constraints. For example, the adversarial behavior should satisfy certain uh, like uh, magnitude constraint or whatever constraint. So this is quite promising, right? Because once I can certify I know this vehicle will only with like 99 uh, uh, accuracy lower bound, then I'm quite satisfied to use it, right? But if it's only empirical, uh, like 99 accuracy based on the existing test data, I still will doubt based on other domains or other test data, whether it still can achieve such accuracy, right? However, so far, the certified accuracy itself also have one limitation, which is the considered uh, like perturbation constraint is very conservative. For example, it only allow the perturbation say within our infinity or our two norm uh, with a, s a small distance or magnitude. That is not quite realistic yet in uh, when we want to apply such certification in real world, right? And here I want to briefly introduce one types of uh, method to certify the end-to-end -end robustness for the machine learning pipeline um, based on additional information. So now, so far, we always learn our machine learning model or train our pipeline based on pure data-driven method. But of course, there are a lot of information that cannot be modeled by data yet. And all the examples we've seen before, like the stop signs and etc., you can see for human, we are not attacked, right? But for um, like models or autonomous driving vehicles, it's attacked. So there must be some additional thing, for example, the domain knowledge or inference of human that make it more robust, but um, you know, machine learning model so far haven't incorporated that yet. So whether there is a way to incorporate it, so I will pr uh, like present one types of um, work or pipeline to incorporate it. I think there are additional other ways to do it, and I think that's a quite promising direction we can think about as well. So basically, the way to incorporate the domain knowledge, in my opinion, is that we can still train a lot of statistical models, for example, neural networks, right, which guarantee the, you know, benign accuracy. And then given the input data, we can give it to different neural networks. But instead of 
directly ensemble them or aggregate them, we compose them with a reasoning component, which is can be represented as a graphical probabilistic graphical models like Bayesian networks or Markov logic networks to make the inference. And the inference connection here represents a knowledge, for example, um, a, a cat belongs to an animal category, or for example, a stop sign should be of octagon shape, it could not be of other shapes, right? Based on such, such uh, phenomenon, we can actually um, like uh, build this pipeline and certify the end-to-end -end certification. The certification definition is uh, like this. Basically, we want to bound the change of the prediction probability, marginal prediction probability, even under certain perturbations. And such perturbation could be of high magnitude or of real world. And a little bit theory is that, of course, this is very hard to make inference based on a probabilistic graphical model is Shapi complete. And, uh, but the interesting part is there are a lot of opportunities because there are structured models uh, that are interesting, uh, like uh, uh, functionalities we can leverage to improve the robustness um, or certify the robustness of it. So, um, of course, here uh, we can do something to uh, like approximate it and prove we can do a p-time algorithm. Uh, I will skip that part and give an example of based on the stop sign we mentioned before. Now we can see how we can defend against uh, the, say, the physical attack or whatever attack we have seen so far. So basically, you can see given a stop sign, now I no longer use a single, say, neural network model or whatever machine learning model to make prediction. I, I still use one model, which is we call it main sensor to predict whether it is a stop sign, right? But I use a lot of other auxiliary sensors to predict other knowledge, for example, whether there is a stop pattern in it or what's the color of it or whether uh, what's the shape of it, right? And there are two types of knowledge we consider which can be represented as a first order logic rules, for example, if it's a, there is a stop pattern, you can infer it's definitely a stop sign. Or if it's a stop sign, it is indeed definitely uh, you know, an octagon shape. So two directions, right? And based on such knowledge, we can have some nice uh, theoretical result guarantee to show the lower bound of this pipeline can be guaranteed uh, by considering the weights learned from the uh, inference um, pipeline. And uh, some uh, empirical result we show is quite interesting in the sense that we all know there is a trade-off between benign accuracy and robustness, right? But based on this pipeline, because it has additional information, we can see um, such pipeline have uh, actually high uh, benign accuracy uh, as well. And uh, of course, high robustness as well. So it's relaxed the trade-off between the benign accuracy and the robustness. It doesn't hurt benign accuracy, but it's improved the robustness a lot. So the X X here shows all types of attacks. There are 44, 46 types of attacks. Some are physical attacks we have seen like the stop sign, some are enforcing attacks, common corruptions, et cetera. So you can see this is attack agnostic and uh, could be quite uh, robust uh, against it. So um, based on such examples, we can see that indeed security and privacy problems are very common for different machine learning paradigms, especially for safety critical applications. And only beyond that data may be still dangerous and using some knowledge may help to improve the robustness of machine learning pipeline and they uh, have some uh, libraries you can play with uh, about the robustness. And uh, yeah, that's uh, all my talk. Uh, thank you, everyone. Happy to take questions.